Hello. I'm going to talk about what I would like to see in GNU Emacs in the future and what I would prefer not to find there. <clears throat> this is all uh, within the context of GNU Emacs and its purpose. GNU Emacs is a part of the GNU operating system and the purpose of the GNU operating system is not simply to do a good job technically, not simply to be good to use. Its main, main purpose, its overall purpose, is to give people freedom and to help them value and defend that freedom. And a GNU package, by being a convenient, well-written program, should contribute to that overall ethical and social goal and not only to the usefulness of our software. And this is true as for GNU Emacs as much as it is for any other free program we've developed. In fact, GNU Emacs is the first GNU program that I released. Uh, I had written some other things before that but didn't release them at that time. There was no particular use in doing so. So it was through GNU Emacs that I learned about various things such as software licenses and how to defend freedom. <clears throat> so you're of course familiar with what GNU Emacs is today thanks to the contributions of thousands of other people who came after me. So what would I like? What would other people like? Well, lots of people come to Emacs familiar with VS Code and they say, ah, please make Emacs more like VS Code. Uh, change everything that you did in the 1980s and 90s uh, to be like that other thing. Well, that wouldn't be feasible even if we wanted to. Uh, our goal is not to be like, not resembling VS Code, any resemblance is coincidental. But um, in particular, we do not want to have extension languages other than Lisp. You know, Emacs Lisp is the variant of Lisp that we've always supported, which has evolved along with Emacs. We can conceivably have Scheme as well, if we can sufficiently solve the problems, the technical problems of making Scheme and Emacs Lisp interoperate. We did some design work. Uh, I think that was with Tom Lord, who the community will greatly miss. Uh, in the 1990s, there are challenges that remain. Maybe it can be done. But a non-Lispy language would be a mistake. It would divert our development focus into areas that we don't need. Languages that are less powerful, less beautiful, and less desirable for the purpose. <clears throat> However, the language that we above all shouldn't support is JavaScript. And that's not because of the language itself. Uh, I don't know the JavaScript language. I've heard people say it's rather clumsy and not well designed, but I don't know this. And in any case, it's not what my views are based on. Uh, there's something much worse about JavaScript, which is not the language itself, but how people use it. Namely, it's been adopted as a way for a network server to send a program to your machine without your even noticing so that this program uh, written by you don't know who uh, will run on your computer and do you don't know what. And you're supposed to just trust all and sundry developers of software for the sites you visit which very commonly do malicious things, often unknown to the people who are running the server itself. They paid someone else to design a website and 
they probably said, oh, make it fashionable and attractive. And they didn't insist, uh, don't snoop on the visitors, if, even if they understood what the issue was. So these sites snoop. And uh, it's a, a serious problem. And the problem comes not from the language JavaScript, but from the fact that browsers, uh, by default, will pull in JavaScript code that gets sent to them and run it to do anything at all. Well, Emacs is supposed to defend your freedom. It's supposed to help you to defend your freedom and lead you to defend your freedom, which means it shouldn't lead you to throw your freedom away as soon as you visit a site that tries to send you a non-free program to run straight off of that other, that other machine. So it's important not to lead users to do computing this way. So what are some good things that we would want instead of this? Well, uh, one thing we want is to update the introduction to Emacs list programming uh, by the late Bob Chassell. It's a, a book that makes it easy for even non-programmers to learn to write simple programs in Emacs Lisp. And from there, they can go on to do better. Well, we made a pretty big change in Emacs Lisp a few years ago, implementing lexical scoping by default. Be, in, originally, Emacs Lisp used to be uh, entirely dynamic scoping, like uh, some of the earliest Lisp interpreters. Well, this is a change that should have a careful job of updating for the introduction. I'm sure we've made it clear in the reference manual, but that's not what beginners read first. We need something to teach them in lexical scoping. Now, another thing we could use is uh, to make it easier to understand the facilities that we have. For instance, I think every package that you might load into your Emacs and run should have a name that helps you remember what job it does. Now, it doesn't have to be super long to tell you what job that package does. You can read the description to learn that. But once you've read the description, it should be memorable. When you see that name again, you should realize, oh, that's the package I could use to do thus and so. And uh, we've had a tendency to give packages names to, for the sake of pure wordplay or uh, lack of obvious meaning. And I think we should add on to those packages names that people will remember. Also, there are ways we can simplify the command interface of Emacs. For instance, there are many different parameters users can specify that can have several values. And sometimes you do various kinds of editing in one session. That's normal in Emacs. And you might want different parameter settings for different kinds of editing. Well, uh, so you specify parameter value A, do some editing. You specify parameter value B and do some editing. And well, you'd switch back and forth. So you want to switch back and forth between these parameters. And I think we should aim, well, people have added various commands to switch between the last two or n values of this parameter and another command to switch between the last two or n values of this parameter. And then that parameter, you know, and that parameter, uh, I think we should be able to have a switch between the last n values command that works on various different parameters and thus makes it easy to remember that there is this facility 
because right now the commands to do that are all ad hoc. And if you don't use a toggling among the last n values of a given parameter, you won't know how to do it. It won't be obvious. It won't be obvious that there is a way. So you'd have to go to a suitable manual and study for a while to think of that. We could make this easily discoverable. There is another kind of modularity that's important, and that is modularity at the level of maintenance. This is something all programmers know about, of course. But in Emacs, various parts interact with other parts, and we've tried to make them modular in design by using lots of hooks. But we haven't gone as far as we could. With some effort, we could find calls from over here to over there that could be replaced by use of hooks so that we could reduce the extent to which you need to know about one part of Emacs to maintain another part of Emacs. And I think that as we keep adding more facilities to Emacs, this kind of modularity will be an investment that pays off. There's one big area of features that I would like to see in Emacs, and that's the ability to edit formatted documents in WYSIWYG, to have it, to be able to edit a, a letter or a, a scientific mathematical paper with formulas and, or uh, a nicely laid out manual looking at what it's really going to look like. Uh, now, we have free software to do this. Uh, for instance, I use LibreOffice some of the time. Sometimes it's faster than writing something to be formatted with a text formatter and then formatting it. Uh, but when I use LibreOffice, I always miss the commands and facilities, the editing facilities of Emacs. Well, I'd like to have them both together, something with the text formatting capabilities of LibreOffice, or even better, of Tech, but the editing commands and facilities of Emacs. Now, this would be a big job, but it can be made up of a lot of medium-sized jobs. If people start working on those medium-sized jobs, then in a number of years, we'll have something absolutely amazing. But one thing I think we really shouldn't have is the equivalent of a modern web browser. The World Wide Web started out in the 1990s in a much simpler form, where a web page described its contents, and the web browser laid them out and the user could parameterize how to lay out various kinds of situations. This was not only convenient for users who wanted to control things and understand things, it was also freedom respecting because the layout was done by your browser. If you have a, had a free browser, you were in control even though the browser was complicated already. But starting around two decades ago, there was a, an explosion in the complexity of browsers as companies wanted to have more and more control over exactly what would appear on a user's screen. So they invented lots of features to control that, features where the user couldn't really customize how something would actually appear because the whole point was that the company could control that. And JavaScript was sort of the ultimate level of the company controls everything. And because of this, going beyond the simple level of web page formatting features in Emacs is basically heading down a path that leads to subjugation. It's a path that we need to stay away from. It's a path to 
uh, an unjust world of computing that you can easily see around you. Web browsers nowadays are designed to display ads that you may not want to see. Uh, they're designed for DRM. They're designed for uh, companies to snoop on you in unobvious ways. And all of that, we should protect ourselves from, protect our users from. So, uh, I hope that some of you will be enthusiastic about some of these changes, especially uh, towards editing formatted text. And if you want to get involved, uh, well, we have a development discussion list called emacs-devel at gnu.org. And uh, you can join that. You can also, if you get interested in working on a package, and you're not an experienced Emacs Lisp developer, it's a very good idea to look for an experienced developer to talk with. Make sure you can write programs in Emacs Lisp first. It's not useful to uh, take up the expert's time learning that. You can still learn it from the introduction. But after that, when it's a matter of how to design your favorite package, do have a discussion with developers. They'll give you design ideas that will help you make a package that we put in to Emacs. And now it's time for questions. <laughs>